Welcome. Today we're going to talk about part two of nuclear chemistry, and that's nuclear equations. A nuclear equation shows how one element can decay into another element with the release of a particle and or energy. We balance nuclear equations when we make the sum of the atomic numbers and the mass numbers equal on both sides of the equation. Before we start, let's take a look at something that we've looked at before and just summarize the types of radiation that we have. The first type is alpha radiation, and alpha radiation is symbolized by 4 over 2 in this alpha symbol, but usually when we're writing nuclear equations, we use the helium nucleus uh, with the 4 for the mass number and 2 for the atomic number because that's what an alpha particle is. It has a high mass because it's a helium nucleus, and when it's emitted by the nucleus of an atom, its mass goes down by 4, and the atomic number goes down by 2. Beta particles are symbolized in nuclear notation with an E for an electron, but we have a zero here for the mass number, indicating that it has no effect on the mass number of the atom, and a negative one to indicate that the number of uh, protons goes up by one when it's emitted. It has a very low mass, and it has no effect on mass number, but it does cause the atomic number to increase by one. The last is a gamma ray. It has zeros above and below to indicate that it has no effect on the nucleus at all, um, except for increasing the nucleus or the nuclei stability. Um, and it has no mass because it's not a particle, it's an electromagnetic wave. So quickly, how many can do this math? 238 is equal to something plus 4. Most of you can probably get that. It's 234. Well, how about this one? 92 is equal to something plus 2. Probably got that one too. That's 90. So now you know how easy it is to do nuclear equations. If I put a U here, then that just indicates the nuclear notation for the element uranium-238. This is the mass number, and 92 down here is the atomic number. This guy over here, HE, that's an alpha particle, mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2. So what about this guy? This guy right here has an atomic number of 90. So we can look on our periodic table and we find out that the element that has an atomic number of 90 is thorium. So to balance this equation, all we had to do was look at the mass numbers along the top. 238 is equal to 234 plus 4. And along the bottom, the atomic number is 92 equal to 90 plus 2. So let's try again. In this case, we have 14 over 6 and a C here. This is carbon-14. It decays into nitrogen-14, which has a mass number of 14 and an atomic number of 7. So what goes here? 14 is equal to 14 plus what? That's how we determine what goes on top. Well, 14 is already equal to 14, so this must be a 0. On the bottom, 6 is equal to 7 plus what? Well, it's actually equal to 7 minus 1. So, down here would be a minus 1. So if we move these two numbers over so that they are in the place of uh, the question mark, we see that we have 0 over negative 1, and that's an electron. So this is a beta particle. How about this one? We have 230 over 90, so this is thorium, and it decays into something plus an alpha particle plus a gamma ray. All we have to do is make sure that the two sides are equal to each other. The left side on top is 230, so 230 is equal to something plus 4 plus 0. So what is the something that goes here? Well, it's 226. What about the bottom? 90 is equal to something plus 2 plus 0. Just like this. That's 88. So if we take these two numbers and we put them where the question mark is, 226 over 88, we should be able to figure out which element goes here. All we need to do is look on our periodic table and find out what has the atomic number of 88. That's radium. So we've done another one. Let's look at a third example. 
In this case, we've got a word problem. It says the radioisotope lead-210 undergoes beta decay. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. So the key here is that we know we have lead-210 and we have a beta particle coming out. So we can write that out here so we don't forget it. Lead-210 becomes something with a beta particle. So we start with our 210 and our lead, and let's put our beta particle right over here. That's a 0 over negative 1. Now we need to know what goes down here, so we look up lead on the periodic table and we find out that it has an atomic number of 82. So now we know that 210 is equal to something plus 0. So what goes up here? 210. 82 is equal to something minus 1. So what's the something down here? 83. Now we can just look up 83 on our periodic table and we'll find out what element symbol goes right here. And if we find 83, we'll see that it's bismuth. Let's do another example. In this case, the radioisotope bismuth-210 undergoes alpha decay. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. So the first thing we need to do is recognize that we've got bismuth-210 and an alpha particle on the other side of the equation. So bismuth-210 decays into something and an alpha particle. What's the something? So we start with writing bismuth-210, and let's put our alpha particle over here. There we go. It's got a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2, and it's just a helium nuclei. We need to know the atomic number of bismuth, so we look it up on our periodic table, for example 3, and we see that it has an atomic number of 83. So 210 is equal to something plus 4. What's the something? How about 206? 83 is equal to something plus 2. What plus 2 equals 83? Hopefully you can all do that math. It's 81. Now we just have to look up 81 on the periodic table and we can find out what the element is. The element with an atomic number of 81 is TL. That's down. So now you know how to balance nuclear equations. It's not that hard if you can do simple math. Most of it you can probably even do in your head. Remember that what we're trying to do is achieve stability for a radioactive nucleus. The next time we're going to talk about fission and fusion where we have a neutron that enters into an atom and makes that atom unstable and it becomes stable by splitting into two entirely different elements and uh, we'll talk about that in part three.